Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are unboxing, testing, and doing a region mod on a Japanese domestic market Nintendo GameCube, the Spice Orange Plus package, uh, which is only sold in Japan. So without further ado, let's get into it and see what we got. Uh, it's much smaller than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be way bigger than this, but uh, it's just a little guy. The thing that makes this um, something that I wanted to purchase was because it has this Game Boy Player, and the Game Boy Player bundle with it is uh, normally pretty expensive to get as just an add-on, but if you buy it in the Plus package like this, and uh, granted this is Japanese, and so everything's cheaper from Japan, a few points of interest on this particular bundle and package is that it was this orange, so Spice Orange was only sold in Japan, you could not buy this color in North America, and the matching Game Boy Player was also, the orange one was only available in Japan. So if you want this color, you gotta import it, and then because you have to import it from Japan, everything is not going to be compatible with USA region games, so you have to do a region mod to it to get it to mod. But from what I've seen, the region mod looks super simple. It's just like a jumper wire, so um, shouldn't be too big of a deal. Power cord, or power supply. And the official Nintendo composite cable. We have the original Spice Orange controller. Uh, been used, a little dirty, but otherwise in Pretty good shape. Instruction manual in Japanese, as one would expect. And the actual cube itself. I never had one of these when I was a kid, so this is the first time I've really ever been seeing one or messing with one. Um, but like I said, the reason I'm super interested in this particular unit is this Game Boy Player, and I have like 40 Game Boy games and Game Boy Advance games, so I'm kind of interested in um, playing those on my CRT through through this device. But here you can see this is the model that has both the analog and digital outs on it. Cool little handle. Uh, that's a little fan there. And uh, obviously the open button shows the disc and the power button. And power button reset. So there she is. Let's get it hooked up to a TV and see if it works before we do any modifications to it. I forgot one thing in the box, and that's the actual disc for the Game Boy Player. And the interesting thing is that the Game Boy Player down here, the physical and the disc, are actually Japanese. The player is region free, the disc is not region free, it only works in Japanese. Um, but it plays Game Boy games from any region, since Game Boy games are not region locked. So um, I should be able to play the Game Boy Player in the Japanese version once I do the region mod switch. And then if I want to play like a GameCube game from America, I can switch over to the American Switch. Let's get this thing hooked up and see if it works. Game Boy Player is what that says. Uh, probably just press start like it says, huh? <laughs> okay, cool. The controller works really well. Not knowing uh, anything else, it seems to work just fine. Alright, I lied. I did buy one GameCube game. You gotta buy a Mario game for your Nintendo console, right? So let's try this. This is an American game, so it should not work by default in this Japanese GameCube. Uh, 
Uh, oh, sign means won't do something is what sign means. Uh, so and it now says like please something kudasai. So it probably says uh, uh, please put in a different game that does work for Japanese region. Uh, thanks. <laughs> so uh, that confirms that it, uh, it definitely doesn't work with American games as we would expect since it's in the Japanese region mode. We've got the cube on the bench. Let's get it torn down so we can get it to the main board. All right, we are rotated a little bit and zoom. Let's zoom in and get a closer look at where we need to solder this switch to. We are looking right here at this R6 missing jumper. The R5 means it's in Japanese mode. The R6, when that's connected, will mean that it is in American mode. And so we'll attach our switch to that missing jumper. And when, we, when our switch is on, it'll short out to the US version. We have successfully soldered both sides of the jumper pads with this little tiny IDE wire. So let's zoom out a little bit and we'll route this to where I have an idea of where I want to put the switch. This is the route I'm planning on taking. We've got our jumper here that we soldered and then we're gonna wrap around the heat sink once we get the heat sink on. We're gonna head out to the front of the case where the number two serial port uh, cover normally is. I decided I liked where it was actually running through that little canal between the board and the shield. Another thing I noticed was that this has one of these little uh, watch batteries and uh, I wanted to see if it still had a good charge in it and it definitely does not. And so if I get it in focus here, this guy's reporting 0.4 volts and these are 3.2 volt batteries. So whatever settings this controls and saves when you turn it off are definitely not being saved. Uh, so let's try to replace that with a battery holder and a fresh battery. We're going to be using one of these surface mount 2032 battery holders. Three point two volts. Whatever that saves is going to save now. A very common problem with the GameCube is that these lasers are calibrated very weak from the factory so that you can't play any burned or 
you know, illegally copyright copyrighted games. And so there is a potentiometer on the bottom of this drive that can allow you to boost that up. Since these are now 20 years old, the lasers are weaker and it's a good idea to uh, at least measure what it's at. And if it's at the factory level, tweak it to be just a little bit stronger so that you don't get any uh, issues you know, mid game or uh, issues loading any games. This is that potentiometer I was mentioning. This controls the intensity of the laser. And so we're gonna measure this and see what value it's currently at if somebody's adjusted it already or not. And then we're gonna adjust it to be uh, a little bit stronger, so. So we are currently at 192 ohms there. And uh, that's actually pretty high or pretty low resistance so this would mean that uh, somebody maybe already has been in here everyone online seems to say that the safe ranges for these lasers are anywhere from 150 to 200 250 ish um, and so we're gonna set ours to 175 and hope that's good enough There we are, that's 172 and that's good enough for me. Let's get this CD drive back together and finish everything up. The whole reason I did it this way is I don't like to do any case cuts in order to do a region switch. Most people, when they do the region mod, they like cut a, a slot out of this and then they, they like glue the switch into here, which like I don't like. I don't like defacing the case. Um, I'd rather inconvenience myself by hiding it somewhere underneath, like here. And so um, this, you know, it's going to be more inconvenient for me, but it doesn't require me cutting the case, and so. Um, I can I can handle that trade-off And with that we finished our switch I might actually put another piece of heat uh, shrink over this so this can't short out anywhere in here on accident, but for now we can at least test and see if our switch mod worked. Now the switch is currently in the neutral position, which should mean that it should still boot up into Japanese menu. Oh, I got a controller. Um, it should boot up in Japanese mode here. Hopefully, assuming we didn't ruin it anymore. Okay, yep, so definitely still in Japanese mode. Which is what we expect since it's in the neutral position. So we, we didn't ruin it. Let's turn it off. We'll flip the switch to quote unquote, America mode. We'll see what happens. Oh no, it didn't work. Oh, maybe I, uh, one second. Maybe I flipped the switch the wrong way. I hope I switched it the wrong way.
Oh, thank God. <laughs> Man, I really, whoo, I thought I screwed up super bad there. Okay, we are in uh, America mode, um, which uh, is a huge relief. So not only did we not ruin the GameCube, let me turn the volume down. Uh, not only did we not ruin it by doing whatever it is we were trying to do, um, but we've also successfully switched over to um, the USA region. And so um, we'll get Super Mario Sunshine back out here just to confirm that it does indeed now play US market games. Aha, all right. So that confirms it, that our modification was successful and we've now enabled ourselves to have either the Japanese region for when I need to use the Game Boy Player um, for playing Game Boy Advance games. And when I wanna play games from America market, I can flip the switch and then we can play games from the American market. Uh, so let's just play around here a little bit more. I've never played this game, so I have, I have no idea what's going on. I'm just flopping around, but it definitely does work great. And surprisingly enough, composite on the GameCube looks pretty dang good. Um, that's not bad. So, one other interesting thing I wanted to see is now, in theory, uh, the Game Boy Player disc that's Japanese should not work anymore since we're in America mode. Please read the Nintendo GameCube instructions. Uh, so I was kind of, I was close. I had the idea. <laughs> but uh, that's what we expect. So Japanese disc doesn't work because we're in the American region. So um, if I wanted to play Game Boy Player games, I'd have to flip the switch, switch it back to Japanese, and then we can play the Japanese version. So power this off quick and just kind of show again kind of why this mod is why this position is really nice for me on this particular gamecube is um you know i can have this tucked up in here and put the cover back on and you know if you if i just wanted to play american games all the time um you know you wouldn't you wouldn't know it you know it did uh, fully fully hidden and there's no no cuts to the back of the case there and so you know this is like the perfect you know, stealth mod. Um, again, it's not as convenient as having it on the back with the switch, but you know, this isn't this isn't too bad either. So you know, just every once in a while, when you want to play Game Boy Advance games, you flip the switch. Otherwise, you just leave it in America mode to play American games. So that was a super huge win, and I'm happy that it turned out as easy as it did. This GameCube was like incredibly clean <laughs> inside, so I didn't even have to like clean it in there, which was odd. It's like Looks like it was hardly ever, if, if never, used. Um, so I think that's going to wrap it up here. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching the GameCube modification process. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you on the next one.